Chapter 16 I am the light of the world, John 8, 12 A text without the context is a pretext. Anyone can take any verse of scripture and make it say anything they want it to say, but honest interpreters ask at least two questions. First they ask, what did this text mean to the people who read it initially? This question demands that we learn something about the history of the time and culture of the people. Our second question will then be, what does it mean to us now? This question makes us think about the way things have changed. In the light of our current situation, what would this same concept look like in our world? John records Jesus' claim, I am the light of the world, twice. We find it recorded in John 8, 12 and John 9, 5. In the first reference, John is talking about darkness and light. The second reference is nuanced to be a message about blindness and sight. I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. What is the biblical context of this verse? In the New International Version of the Bible, there is an important editorial note just before John 7, 53. It says, The earliest manuscripts and many other ancient witnesses do not have John 7, 53 to 8, 11. This editorial note does not appear in the King James Version because that version was translated before these manuscripts were discovered. A similar kind of notation appears in most other translations. This does not eliminate the story of the woman caught in adultery. It simply makes the observation that this story does not belong in this part of John's Gospel. This is an important for our study because it helps us discover the context for Jesus' words. If John 7:53 to 8:11 are removed, then the context of John 8:12 is John 7:1 to 52. This passage be, begins with Jesus' brothers telling him that he should go to the Jewish festival of tabernacles. You ought to leave here and go to Judea, so that your disciples may see the mirac- miracles that you do. Verse 3. John Jesus did not go with his brothers. He waited until they had gone on their way before he made his own way there secretly. He knew that there were people there who wanted to kill him. Halfway through the festival, Jesus went into the temple courts and began to teach. Verse 14. Jesus was still teaching in the temple courts. Verse 28. Later in the chapter. A significant time reference is found in verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the feast... Jesus speaks to people in the temple courts once again. There is no other change of time reference given between verse 37 and 52. If verse 12 is the next verse, then we must conclude that Jesus made the claim to be the light of the world at the temple on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. What is the historical context of this verse? What do we know about the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles? It was in the fall. This feast celebrated the harvest like we celebrate Thanksgiving. It also reminded the people of Israel about their history. When their forefathers wandered through the desert, they lived in tents. During the festival of tabernacles, Jewish people would remember this in a special way. They would make tents or makeshift shelters in their backyards. This they called, they called the shelters booths. While they were living in these booths in their backyard, the sky would light up at night by something that was happening in the temple. David Brickner wrote about this in his book, Christ in the Feast of Tabernacles. The court of women was a wide open space. In the center stood four giant candelabras, which according to the Talmud were approximately 50 cubits high, approximately 73 feet. Atop each candelabra were four bowls for lamps, a total of 16 giant bowls, each to be filled with oil. Wicks made from the priest's worn-out linen robes served to light the oil. The only way to fill and ignite the lamps was for young priests to climb ladders. Once the giant lampstands were lit, the Mishnah tells us, there was no courtyard in Jerusalem that was not illuminated from the light of the bite Ha Sho Eva. This fire was a reminder for them of the pillar of fire at night that God had given to their ancestors in the desert. 
It was during this observance that Jesus talked to the people in the temple courts. Jesus spoke to the people on the last day of this festival. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. He was comparing himself to the candelabras in the temple courts. The people depended on this light to see the outside at night. Just as these candelabras gave light to all the backyards in Jerusalem during this festival, so he would give light to the whole world. He was comparing himself to the pillar of fire by night. The people of Israel were dependent on this pillar of fire. It gave warmth to them during the cool evenings in the desert. It gave light to them as they lived outside. It also gave them direction. When it would move, they knew they had to move too. Just as the people of Israel followed the leading of the pillar of fire during their wilderness wanderings, so everyone can follow the leading of Jesus as they walk on their journey through life. Jesus was promising to give light to all who would follow him. The biblical and historical context of John 8:12 is very important because it explains the meaning of the verse. I am the light of the world, John 9, 5. In John 9, the biblical and historical context merge into one. The disciples had a question for Jesus, verses 1 to 3. Who sinned? This man or his parents? Jesus gave them the answer, neither. But this man was born blind so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. God did have a purpose for this man's disability. This man was allowed to be born blind so that God could show his power to heal. When Jesus healed this man, he would bring light into this man's world. Jesus had something to teach his disciples about God's work. Verses 4 and 5. Daylight lasts briefly. In most places, if we only have 12 hours of daylight, Jesus taught his disciples that daylight was the time when we must do the work that God had given us to do. Darkness comes swiftly. Night is coming when no one can work. There is a time when we are not going to be able to do any work. Our time will come to an end. For most of us, that t comes at a time of our death. We need to do what we can during our lifetime. We have no guarantee of tomorrow. We must work while we can. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John 9, 5. Jesus made a personal application of this statement. He said, I am in this world for a brief time. This is true for everyone. He also said, I have a task to do. I must shine. I am the light of the world. I must do God's work while I can. Jesus was only going to be on this planet for 33 years. When you take away all the necessary time to be born and get an education, that doesn't leave very many years. He started his ministry when he was 30. Within three years, he would die on the cross for our sins. His time was short. The disciples' time was short too. So is ours. Jesus healed this blind man because he w it was God's work for him to do at the time. Through these two examples, the light of the candelabras in the temple and the light that came into the blind man's life when Jesus healed him, Jesus taught his disciples what he meant. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Have you decided to follow Jesus? You don't have to walk in darkness. You can have the light of life. Philip P. Bliss wrote, The light of the world is Jesus. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shone in. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light. Tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. What did Jesus claim? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He shines his light into our darkness.